video, we will be discussing how to understand and keep your marriage vows. Marriage is something that should be seriously and prayerfully considered. Unfortunately, a lot of us are jumping into marriage with a strong misconception of it. One quick tip that I will give you concerning marriage is to build your friendship. Marriage is not about sex. Sex is the icing on the cake. The cake of marriage is your friendship. This friendship must be based on the solid rock foundation of God's word. I'm sure that you have seen beautiful houses collapse because the foundation was not structured well. No matter how beautiful the icing on a cake is, without the strong cake to support it, it cannot stand by itself. Friendship in marriage outlasts passion. As you get older, you will find that you will have to limit your sugar intake because your body will not process sugar as well as it did when you were younger. So if you are offered cake, you may take a slice of cake, but those who are careful about sugar in their system will cut out the icing or have just a very little icing. So it is with sex. When you get married as a young couple, even if you have sex every day, as you get older, you will see that the frequency of sex will decrease. So what is left when you are unable to have sex like before? The friendship that you have built in your marriage. What remains when the children that you have both raised are grown and gone? the friendship that you have built in your marriage. Many couples find that they are strangers to each other when their children are grown and gone. Don't fall into this trap. Don't expend all your energy raising your children that you forget the one you started the journey with, your beloved spouse. Marriage must be nurtured. It is a garden of flowers that must be watered daily. And both the husband and wife are responsible for this. What is a vow? The dictionary definition of a vow is a solemn promise to perform some act or behave in a specified manner, especially a promise to live and to act in accordance with the rules of a religious order. The Bible warns us that it is better not to make a vow than to make one and break it. Marriage is ultimately sacrificial. This person that you have decided to marry, is this the face that you will be content waking up to for the rest of your life? Will you love this person when he or she gains weight loses weight, loses hair, or something much worse. Let us take a closer look at marriage vows. Marriage is a covenant. You don't just pack it up and walk away from it easily. It requires steadfast commitment from both the husband and the wife. You must be committed to make your marriage work with the help of God in all seasons. So eager to get married. You say your vows, not really thinking about them. Just so happy to finally belong to the one that you love. Why will you think of the harsh realities when you have never felt so good and loved in your life? You think because courtship was so sweet, marriage will stay sweet or even get sweeter. You haven't dwelt on your differences yet. You haven't dwelt on your in-laws or on your finances because you believe love conquers all. Let me tell you that there are so many things designed to tear you and your spouse apart once you get married. I've said it several times that from the moment you say I do, 
It is the devil's mission to get you to say, I don't. He wants to break you up. And you must understand that he is your enemy. You are blissfully unaware of what the devil plans for you. You get married with hopes and dreams, thinking that your love will stand the test of time. Thinking that what happened to someone else cannot possibly happen to you. You think that your story will be different because you are on a love high. The realities have not quite set in. The challenges have not quite set in. In order for your love to stand the test of time, you must work at it. The romantic high that you get from courtship cannot and will not carry your marriage. Marriage is serious business. So let's talk about these vows that you have said so quickly and happily. Because you will be tested in sickness and in health. What if the one that you love gets so sick and weak, ages before your eyes, and is a shadow of the vibrant being that he or she once was? Now you have turned from lover to caretaker. You have turned from seeking your spouse's strength to being your spouse's strength. This is highly frustrating, depressing, and devastating. Will you stand for better or for worse? Truth is there will be worse in your marriage. The seasons of marriage hmm, are like a graph. It goes up, it goes down. You'll be at the top of the hill, you'll be in the valley down below. So you need to understand the seasons of marriage just as the seasons of life. What if your finances take a nosedive? You lose everything and have to start again from scratch. Lack of money now makes you see another side to your spouse. The pressures of life can make your spouse evolve into something unrecognizable. Alcoholism, hanging out with friends instead of you, withdrawing from you, cheating on you, getting involved in drugs, verbal abuse, physical abuse, get rich quick schemes. Will you stand till death do us part? With all the challenges that you have been through, what if your love burned out and marriage became more of a job you needed to get through than happily ever after? Will you stay? If the doctors tell you that there is nothing more that they can do for your spouse, will you stand by a spouse that is at death's door? I can assure you that few think of what their vows actually mean on their wedding day. If people did, divorce rates will not be so high. So pray for the grace to stand. Pray for your marriage that it will not end up as a woeful statistic. Pray that whatever challenges come your way, you and your spouse will overcome. Pray for the grace to keep your vows to your spouse and to God because you need God's grace. Your love will be tested. Marriage is prayer all the way in order to honor God and your spouse. Prayer enables you to forgive daily and bear all things in love and not war. Marriage is not for the faint hearted. Marriage is a huge responsibility. Pray and seek God's face before you embark on it. Pray and stay close to God while you are in it. For only he, the creator of marriage, can see you through it. Only God can help you to keep loving when you just don't feel like loving anymore. Yes, in the sweetness of your courtship, you think that this will never happen. 
there is a thin line between love and hate. You will walk that line several times in marriage, for no one will hurt and disappoint you more than your spouse and your children, because these are the closest people to you on earth. And when you allow yourself to get close to someone, that person has the power to hurt you. It's unavoidable. You will need God's help to forgive and to love. I personally believe that marriage is one of God's plans to help us make heaven. Marriage and parenting teach so much. Above all, they teach love and forgiveness without which none can make heaven. The love of man expires. Yes, it has an expiration date. Only the agape love of God has continuity. It has eternity. It is forever. This is the love that you need in your marriage because it fuels you, energizes you to keep loving each other, especially in the tough seasons because the tough seasons will come. There was a time I read in a book, I forgot the book, and the author gave an illustration of marriage being a couple. The husband and the wife are in a boat on top of the ocean and the water looks so calm and they start off their journey of the marriage and beneath the water are different kind of sea animals, the gentle ones and the harmful ones. And a storm can come up ahead. He encourages you to hold on to the captain of the ship. The captain of the ship is Jesus. And then he tells you that no matter how things may look calm now as you start out your marriage, there are things under the surface that will come up and will challenge you. Are you ready for the challenges? With Jesus, you can overcome any challenge. So don't neglect the author of marriage. Don't neglect the captain of the ship of marriage. You need Jesus. Yes. Remember, I use them interchangeably. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are all God. So when I say you need God, I'm referring to the Father, I'm referring to the Son, Jesus, and I'm referring to the Holy Spirit. Spend more time seeking an intimate relationship with God. Spend more time praying. It is God that will give you the grace and strength to overcome the many challenges of marriage. It is God that will enable you to keep your vows in marriage. It is God that will help you to keep your vow to follow him for the rest of your life. It is God that will use your marriage if you and your spouse surrender your marriage to him to prepare you for heaven. Songs of Solomon chapter 8 verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. No matter the challenges that you face in your marriage, if you carry the agape love of God, in your heart. There is nothing that can tear you apart because you understand that the devil is the enemy of marriage. So you and your spouse have been brought together by God to also fight together the tactics of the enemy. He will do his best to tear you apart. Don't let him do that. Do you remember the blame game in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve started out being so in love with each other. And then the devil came. The devil is still coming. You and your spouse have to be ready for him. Please work together jointly to tend the garden of your marriage. Please be committed to your marriage vows. Understand that marriage is a covenant. When you involve God from the beginning, trust that God will carry you through and see you through your marriage. A beautiful marriage is absolutely possible, but it takes 
steadfast commitment from the both of you. And this steadfast commitment starts with the husband and wife having an intimate relationship with the Lord. It is the Lord that will empower you to love each other as unto him and to go through this life, the many challenges of life, with his help. You shall overcome with God on the throne, with God by your side. You can keep your marriage vows and have a beautiful marriage. Thank you for watching. If this video has been a blessing to you, hit the like button, stay subscribed, and share. God loves you and I love you. God bless you.